Today I'd like to talk to you about a new spinner thing. A spin jig or a 5C spin fixture as is also known. This is the item here. I bought mine about 12 years ago from little machine shops. So uh, they're a lot cheaper on eBay now. Paid about 45 bucks for it plus delivery from the US. Has a 5C female taper, one end and a shaft. And it's got a series of holes drilled around every 10 degrees. And then it's got like a vernier set of holes drilled from zero to nine. And they are your one degree steps. This is direct indexing. You pull the pin out, you turn that, it's then a direct index. So you can't get half a degree, quarter degree, any of those sort of things. So my suggestion is to you, do what I did. Draw up a little chart in Excel. I had the whole numbers and the division. So they mark the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 35. So they're 30, 10 degrees. Then there's these ones. So when you're trying to do different angles, and it can get confusing. Especially in these mods I will tell you now you should and need to do. They've got a V indicator point up here between the 4 and the 5. Totally useless. Extremely confusing waste of time. Why? The zero hole is there. You have here, say, for example, 32. The zero hole is lining up with 1. So as you're operating from there, you're thinking, where am I? And the more the angle you look, is that 32 or is that 31? No way to tell. So the first thing you need to do is stand in your position where you operate. I'm a right-hander, and I sort of tend to like it this way. So then what you do is get the zero hole, main hole, and the zero sub-hole. Line that up. Then stand where you normally stand and look at it on the angle because you're going to get parallax error. Then just mark with a little text of colour, a little mark. So then you know, as soon as you read that and it says zero, you know you're on zero degrees. Not up here where it's pointing and you're coming down here and I want eight and it's got to turn this way and that way. Because what happens is, here we are on zero. But now, to go nine, you have to rotate it backwards and forwards to line up. And if you're up here, it's very hard to know. But here I can tell you it's at 1.9. As you do more and more complex jobs, it's easy to get confused, as in where is it, what, what is it, that sort of thing. Then when you get to the end, you find you got half a tooth too many or half a tooth too little. You can't put it back on. So that's the first thing to do. And I've now sent a pop mine and I use that. The next thing to do, once you've done that, is the procedure. Here, for example, I've done a 32 XL pulley. In the chart, because it's one degree, if you want 3 into 360, 120, 240, it's okay. But if you want 7, so there's certain divisions you cannot do. Because there's no equal, has to end up in equal degrees. So up the top, I've got a 5C spin jig angle and hole numbers. So if I want two holes, two slots, two flats, I know it's 0 and 18. That's a direct dial. Here I've done 30 teeth. I marked in red the full number ones. Then when I have to do the subplot, I've then marked it in black, so it's easy to read. So let's say, for example, 45. I want 45 holes. First one's zero, second one's 0.8. The way up here is 20.8, 21.6, 22.4, 23.2, 24, 24.8, 25.6, 26.4, 27.2, 28, 28.8, 29.6, 30.4, 30.1, 32, 32.8, 33.6, 34.4, 35.2. 4, 35 now I hope you remember that. So what will happen is you'll go up here, oh yeah, that's 38.4 and that's 30. But then, where is the pin? Always go, just say you're on a full zero, and the next one is 10 and say 5. Nip that down, line it up, then always turn the same direction till it goes in. 5. Now the next one might be 7. Don't go like that. Put it back into the zero, rotate it, and that will get rid of that extra 0.6 of degree or 0.5 of degree or 0.8 of degree. Then you can read it out. You say, all right, I'm sitting on 35. I want 35.7. I can just put it in there, rotate it, and it's done. Look at the dial, and I can tell. If you go, oh, yeah, it's 3. Okay, the next one is, you know, 1 turn and 8, and you put it here, and you then go, and that, oh, yeah, there it is. You may have gone... One turn too many, one turn too little, and the job is ruined. So get that procedure. Main plate first, then the subplate. Next modification is the pin locates on a taper. And sometimes the taper is very tight, and you may have to tap it out. Get yourself a little spanner that will fit in there, 
and you can just pull it out like that because depending on what you've got on this end you may not be able to tap it out but once you've done that a few times you'll find out that the end will come off so you need to lock tight it in so when you push it in don't prove you're a he-man and hit it with a hammer and all that sort of crap because you'll only jam it in and you'll have trouble also when you're setting it up make sure you're on zero first before you set it up next problem is it's just bored through this casting there's no bearings it's just cast iron bore on this shaft good enough for direct indexing if it was beefy enough to put bearings it'd be fantastic you could put a stepper drive on it and be able to do differential indexing. You could put a motor on it, put it on your CNC mill and use it for a turning attachment, but as is, not so good. So what happens is that on this end, there's a threaded nut. So that puts on, but that pulls up against this collar. So sometimes you find that this collar moves or is loose. So you have to push it on and try to nip it up. You might have a bit of slack there. So what I've done with both of these is I then set, I pop drilled in between. So as it locked in, you can shift it slightly in. So when the screw goes down, it pushes it tight and then nip it up. Then there's no play. Also, there is this screw adjuster tightener. So that's just a shaft, threaded shaft that fits on the collar. But again, okay. these are loose. You have to tighten the chuck. Then when you come up, you find that the screws, uh, you can't get a good enough purchase. You tighten that and this is spinning on the shaft, not tightening the nut. So spot those through and then they'll be secure. This always seems to come off. Make sure it's tight. Then another mud that I did was on these side faces. It's machined on this back face and there's only a rough cast on these side faces. You could set it up either cross that way with a dial indicator or set it up that way. But what I did was that I put it up and I machined both of those faces flat. Now you can go to the extra trouble of trying to make sure, you know, they're a certain distance out and all that. But they're offset and I was just going to mill too much material away just to have a figure that I don't really need. Then you just have to measure from there to the centre line or the other way. Then if you have a chuck set up on your mill and have that zeroed and you know that's 32.786542 millimetre or whatever, you know that you just have to move this across and you know you're on the center line. So you can take it out with your chuck still on, put, put it back in, no problem. You can also set the chuck to perhaps, or the vice, can just touch on there and that can be the zero of your vice. And then that jaw, you can measure that and get those distances. And so it's very easy to pull off, pull back on. Now, if you've ever made your own XL pulleys, when I had material, scrap material, I made all my own for the CNC lathe and the CNC mill and all that. But now I can buy a XL32 for five bucks, eight bucks, seven, twelve tooth, twenty-four tooth. So around five to ten dollars. Cheaper than what I can buy the material. So I buy them now. But on my design for the SX3 CNC automatic tool changer, it's going to have a three pallet, thirty tool platen. So I need a long pulley. So that's why this is here. You grind up your Tool. I'll just show you this little drawing here of the dimensions. You grind it up. This is a holder off boring head. So it just fits in there. To find the center height, on this one it's 70 millimeter. I made up a little special pin, like you'll see in this photo, and it's 70 millimeter high. You'll see that dimension of the flat, and on that pin, I've machined the angle at half that height. So what I do is put this in the head, lower it down until just starting to touch the taper, and then I can move that pin, setting pin across, and it's at the right height when it's touching the taper and that flat is just touching the side of the pin. So I just set it up there. Then I know that the tool is set to the center height and that problem is solved. Also, to find the center of the chuck, if you have a round ball bobbler, that's fine. You just need to set it to one position. What I normally do is just go up and down until it just touches and find a spot. If the ball happens to be up here, it doesn't really matter. As long as you don't move the height up and down, you can wind your table around and across is what I do. Then when you come across the other side, it's touching in the same height. So then you find your centre, set your drove to half, and you've got the zero point. But that wasn't needed in this particular case for this particular cut. So set up, you come in, you touch, 
you set your, your zero on your drill or your dial and you move in 1.4 millimetre, 55 thou and take the cut. But you have to be careful in your setup. I've got a 5C ER32 chuck, which grips a lot better than the 5C collet. However, it was larger. And when you're going to mill up a, say this, pulley needed to be 44 millimetres long, you have to have some to hold it in your chuck, in, in the uh, collet or chuck that's there. Largest 5C collet is 1 inch. Largest ER32 collet is 20 mil. I machine 20 mil on it because I turn this up in the lathe. Then you have to allow for the cutting clearance. And when it comes in the cut, it will take a cut. So it will spin around. And here is your collet, extremely small neck, excellent. But on the smaller ones, especially even below, say, 30, or even, say, below 40, you'll hit the chuck, you'll hit the actual jig. So you have to stay back. So I had extra material, 5 mil there, and I've got it hanging out of the collet by roughly 5 mil as well. A 5C collet grips like that, so the job can move around like that. So you need to make it a spot on size and a reasonable length. An ER32 collet clamps parallel, and it means you can hold a piece that's not so uh, long more securely. So I, I had to make it longer and hang out. So that's what you have to do. Not only think about the job, but how you're going to hold it. You say, okay, yeah, I'll make this 20 mil long, this spigot. But how much clearance do I need? So it'll pay, really, when you first do it, to line that up. So all I did was that I wanted a 30 tooth pulley. This is a chart. I just got a little holder up there and I write it down on the piece of paper as you'll see in this photo and I take a cut, tick off, I've done that one, go around. So the first cut, I touch it, zero, move in, take a full cut. Come up here slowly until I'm almost touching the jig. I get a six inch rule, put it between there and there and that's me. That's my minimum clearance. So the rule is just touching, yep, that's far enough. I'm not going to go any further than that. Set the drill to zero, wind it back, then index the next tooth. I take a full cut, then I can see, measure that width, and then I know that I'm right. Yeah, you can try a little cut, and uh, is it right, is it wrong, but unless you go to full depth, you may be one hole out, and you won't pick that up. And if it's wrong, you've stuffed it. So, just index them all the way around. Bang, 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 bang. I put the disc wobbler in, set the height, the, the distance between the length of the wobbler to the, with the jig, center height, touch there, touch there, zero the drive, then I knew I was in the center, touched on the face, I had a machining allowance on there and there, so then I just drilled and tapped all the holes. So there, all you have to do, three holes, set up the first one, put your center drill in, bang, bang, 120, bang, 240, bang, then take out the center drill, put your drilling tap in, 0, 120, 240, bang, 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 put the tap in, 0, 120, 40, move the other 12 mil, again, 0, bang, 0, bang, 0, bang, 0, bang. So it's, you know, 0, 120, 240, if you, so I drill them all with the center drill first, you're adding extra travel. You're wanting this for each center drill, you want it for each drill, you want it for each can of bore, and you want it for each tap, and you want it for your chamfer. So you too many movements. Do your first row, finish them off, move once. Second row, finish them off. Move the second time, move the third time, move the fourth time. Much quicker, much easier. So I just thought I'd like to show you, well worth the money, and that's the pulley, that's how much I've left on. I finished at the size in the bore, when it was in there, I then checked the bore with the dial indicator. I think it was two thou out, so I just tapped it one thou down one side. And I was running through, through, tighten it up. That's where the run out is. I added five mil there. I've left the mill to take off that face, so those dimensions I've added the mill. I put this in, back in the lathe, face down that face, and part off whilst holding on there. And there's the Stack 30 tooth XL pulley using the highly recommended spin jig. Now, if you like the video, tell your friends. If you didn't like it, tell me. Subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>